your host, Tom Price. With us today is Associate Professor of Biology, Dr. Amy Freestone, who is also the Temple Ambler Field Station Director. Thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure. So where did you grow up? I grew up in New Jersey, not too far, a few hours from here. Where in Jersey? Um, in uh, Monmouth County, so kind of central New Jersey on the coast. I grew up on, a, on an estuary, so pretty, um, oh, pretty, cool. close to, uh, pretty close to the ocean. Cool. And did you have any uh, games or musical instruments you played as a child? Oh, yeah. Um, I loved music. I played um, uh, flute and um, piano, um, guitar. I still tinker with guitar. So, cool. yeah, music is definitely an interest. What kind of music do you listen to? Um, I would say mostly kind of contemporary folk music. Cool. And did you have any nicknames growing up? Um, none that are noteworthy, I don't think. <laughs> do you have any siblings? I do. I have one, one older sister. Yeah. And what would she say about you? <laughs> um, well, um, I, I think she <laughs> He would say that, that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a hard worker and I've always sort of been very driven um, to kind of go after what I want professionally and um, yeah. And where did you do your undergraduate work? Um, I did um, my bachelor's uh, of science at Rutgers University at Cook College. And did you have any mentors as an undergraduate? I did. Um, I, I did. I had a, a wonderful mentor, um, Carl Nordstrom. He was a, a geomorphologist, coastal geomorphologist, and I was doing work on coastal ecology at the time. So we collaborated and that was a really meaningful mentorship to me because even though I was an undergraduate at the time, um, he really treated me like a collaborator. Um, and I think that was really, uh, it has really shaped how I mentor my students now and, and just really seeing, you know, in value and, and all their contributions and um, just making them feel part of the team and, and feeling like they have valued contributions. I think that's um, really important. It was important for my professional development for sure. Great. And then uh, what about your graduate work? I did my PhD um, in ecology at the University of California at Davis. Yeah, which has a very large ecology and, and uh, program. So it's over, you know, 200 students. It's a really, really large program. It's, um, it's a really strong program in ecology. Cool. And um, when did you come to Temple? Um, I came to Temple uh, in 2009. I, I graduated with my um, PhD and then did a postdoctoral fellowship at the Smithsonian Institution for about three years um, and then started at Temple in 2009. So I've been here for 11 years. And what do you like most about your job? Oh, um, I, I actually lo love student mentorship as you know, it came up mm -hmm. earlier. I think it's, it's really fun to be able to connect with students. Um, I've, I've really enjoyed my um, uh, mentoring undergraduates, mentoring graduate students through research experiences, kind of sharing with them that, that sense of discovery and ownership that they can have, um, the creativity that comes along with research, being able to ask a question that you find fascinating and sort of working until you get an answer to that question and then figuring out how you're going to package it and, and let other people know about what you found out. Um, that's, a, that's a process that I think is really exciting and it's fun to, to walk with students through that and kind of show them, um, show them the scientific process and, and uh, all the ups and downs of research and the first moments of joy and the moments of frustration and it's all part of it. Um, but hopefully Hopefully the balance is more on the joyful side than on the frustration side and, and um, hoping to ignite that spark in them to pursue what they want to do. And what uh, area of research are you doing now? Um, I'm an ecologist. I'm a pretty broadly trained ecologist. So most of my primary research is in marine ecosystems, coastal mm -hmm. marine ecosystems. <clears throat> I'm interested in biodiversity and how species interact across very large global gradients. So I do a lot of experiments across um, latitudinal gradients. So that means doing ex the same experiment in, you know, in the subarctic versus the versus the tropics and seeing if I get the same answer, trying to understand how nature kind of works differently in different parts of the world. I uh, will say in my capacity as the director of the field station um, at Ambler, we're starting a lot of terrestrial research there. So we're starting a lot of forest science research. Um, and so I, I get to, I've always done a little bit of terrestrial research as well. And so it's fun to sort of flex those muscles and get back onto dry land for a little while with my research. 
Um, so I, I kind of toggle between the two at the moment, e uh, marine ecology and terrestrial ecology. Cool. Um, looking back, what advice would you give yourself as an undergraduate student? <laughs> um, to, you know, enjoy the journey. You know, it's, you know, I think the, the whole, the whole process of going through your coursework and figuring out what you want to do and then pursuing that, I would say just, um, you know, enjoy it. Um, because I think it's, it, that is, that is part of, part of your, you know, your path, your professional development, and hopefully the, the, you know, the end puts you where you want to be, um, but to just, you know, work hard and go after what you want to do. Awesome. Um, do you have any memorable temple moments memorable that you would like to share with us? <laughs> um, memorable temple moments. Um, you know, I, th I think, you know, the, the, the moments that have meant the most to me in, in my teaching capacity has been moments when I've been able to, to really connect, connect with students and, and offer them um, something that, that does ignite that spark. You know, every, every undergraduate, you kind of hope for that aha moment at some mm -hmm. point in your undergraduate that you're saying, yes, I want to do this. This is what resonates with me. This is what feels right. Um, and, you know, I've had the privilege of, I think, fostering some of those moments in students, cool. and, and that feels very fulfilling to, to, you know, to facilitate that, that moment for them. And whether they ultimately pursue that or not, you know, just feeling like they, they have at least for a little bit, a, you know, a sense of direction and a sense of enthusiasm for the path that they, they're going to pursue. That's, Great. that's fulfilling. Thank you. I'm going to shift gears a little bit and talk about your personal life, if you don't mind. Um, do you have a main fault? <laughs> a main fault? Um, I will, um, yeah, like obsess about things, I think, until like I've, I've worked it out in my head. I will keep myself mm -hmm up at night, um, kind of working through anything that that is problematic. <laughs> I don't know if that's more of a fault for myself and then I have to mm -hmm. sort of learn how to turn that off. But um, I, I think that's that's something that I certainly struggle with. Um, what do you appreciate most in your friends? Oh, um, just authenticity and, and just a genuine um, connection with them. And I've, I've had, you know, friends that I've had for years that, that have followed very different professional paths than me. And, and it's always um, it's always nice to, to connect with folks that um, walk very different paths from yourself and, and uh, just appreciate, appreciate that. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? <laughs> um, <laughs> gosh, I don't know. Um, pass, I, I, that's, gonna, that, that's gonna have to be a thinker question for me. <laughs> what are you currently reading? Um, I, uh, I have two small children, so I don't do a lot of recreational reading. <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of this pandemic knows that um, I have a four-year-old and a seven-year-old. So honestly, most of what I'm reading right now is picture books and Harry Potter because it's- I can relate books. to that, yes. <laughs> um, uh, do you have a dream vacation spot or a vacation spot you love to go to? Oh, I- um, yeah, I've, because I because my research has taken me a lot of different places, I've been able to kind of tack on um, research, uh, vacation uh, time, short vacation time in, in mm -hmm. lots of places all over the world. I would say I would, I would love to go to, um, to Machu Picchu. Um, mm -hmm. I've never been there. Um, I, I've spent some time in South America, but I think there's certainly more to explore there. I've also would love to go back to New Zealand. Um, there's just some some mm -hmm. lovely landscapes there. I get um, the ones that the, the places that appeal to me are, are really those kind of majestic landscapes that mm -hmm. um, are just that that just are beautiful. Yeah. Cool. Um, what would be the title of your biography? <laughs> These are hard questions. I don't know. <laughs> um, pass. I'm gonna have to think about that one too. Sorry. <laughs> what excites you? Um, you know, I love. Um, I love, as I mentioned before, that that you know this the sense of discovery that um, my work brings. I mean, professionally, what ex excites me is is being able to pursue a question and and figuring out the answer. Um, what excites me on a day to day basis is is seeing my kids, um, you know, figure out what what they are excited about mm -hmm. and sort of facilitating those those same moments, those same aha moments that I get to facilitate with undergraduates. Being able to facilitate those with with young children too um, is is fun. Cool. What's your favorite thing to do in Philly? Oh, um, hike. 
Yeah, I mean, so, you know, I wouldn't mm -hmm. have thought necessarily that an urban university would be where I would land. Um, I was brought up hiking and camping. And that's, I think, you know, ultimately why I probably came back to doing ecology um, for my career. Um, but, you know, they, there's lovely places to hike in, um, in Philadelphia, the Wissahickon. We hike there with my family a lot. And there's lots of other little nooks and crannies around that have lovely trails. Um, so anything that that gives me a little little sense of the outdoors, little sense of nature um, helps helps. Yeah. Anyway. Cool. All right, we're gonna do something called the rapid fire response. I'm gonna give you two words and you just state <laughs> your preference. Okay, I'll do my best. <laughs> tea or coffee? Oh, tea. Morning or night? Morning. Dark or milk chocolate? Oh, dark. Offense or defense? Defense. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Bert or Ernie? Ernie. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best reaction I've gotten to that one yet. Thank you for that. Uh, half full or half empty? Oh, half full. Hot or cold? Hot. California or New Jersey? <laughs> I've lived in both. That's hard. Um, I, I both. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be a geographic uh, elitist. Atlantic or Pacific? <laughs> It's the same sort of problem. Yeah, yeah. Same sort of, both. I love both coasts. Awesome. Thanks so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate it.